Please subscribe, like and share this video. Thank you for your support. 2 U.S. Code Chapter 28, Statutory PAYSYOUGO. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 936, Adjustment for Current Policies. A. Purpose The purpose of this section is to provide for adjustments of estimates of budgetary effects of PAYGO legislation for legislation affecting four areas of the budget. 1. Payments made under Section 1395W4 of Title 42, referred to in this section as Payment for Physician Services. 2. The Estate and Gift Tax under Subtitle B of Title 26. 3. The AMT. And 4. Provisions of EGTRRA or JGTRRA that amended Title 26 or provisions in later statutes further amending the amendments made by EGTRRA or JGTRRA. RRA, other than a the provisions of those two acts that were made permanent by the Pension Protection Act of 2006, Public Law 109-280, b amendments to the estate and gift tax referred to in paragraph 2, c the AMT referred to in paragraph 3, and d the income tax rates on ordinary income that apply to individuals with adjusted gross incomes greater than $200,000 for a single filer and $250,000 for joint filers. b duration this section shall remain in effect through December 31, 2011. C. Medicare payments to physicians. 1. Criteria legislation that includes provisions amending or superseding the system for updating payments under subsections D and F of Section 1395W4 of Title 42 shall trigger the current policy adjustment required by this chapter. 2. Adjustment The amount of the maximum current policy adjustment shall be the difference between A. Estimated net outlays attributable to the payment rates and related parameters in accordance with subsections D and F of Section 1395W4 of Title 42, as scheduled on December 31, 2009 to be in effect, and b what those net outlays would have been if i the nominal payment rates and related parameters in effect for 2009 had been in effect through December 31st, 2014, without change, and 2 thereafter, the nominal payment rates and related parameters described in subparagraph a had applied and the assumption described in clause i had never applied. 3. Limitation if the provisions in the legislation that cause it to meet the criteria in paragraph 1 cover a time period that ends before December 31, 2014, subject to the maximum adjustment provided for under paragraph 2, the amount of each current policy adjustment made pursuant to this section shall be limited to the difference between a. Estimated net outlays attributable to the payment rates and related parameters specified in section 1395W4 of Title 42, as scheduled on December 31, 2009 to be in effect for the period of time covered by the relevant provisions of the eligible legislation, and b. what those net outlays would have been if the nominal payment rates and related parameters in effect for 2009 had been in effect, without change, for the same period of time covered by the relevant provisions of the eligible legislation as under subparagraph a. d. Estate and Gift Tax 1. Criteria legislation that includes provisions amending the estate and gift tax under subtitle b of Title 26 shall trigger the current policy adjustment required by this chapter. 2. Adjustment The amount of the maximum current policy adjustment shall be the difference between a. Total revenues projected to be collected under Title 26, as scheduled on December 31, 2009, to be in effect, and b. What those revenue collections would have been if, on the date of enactment of the legislation meeting the criteria in paragraph 1, estate and gift tax law had instead been amended so that the tax rates, nominal exemption amounts, and related parameters in effect for tax year 2009 had remained in effect through December 31, 2011, with nominal exemption amounts indexed for inflation after 2009 consistent with subsection g. 3. Limitation if the provisions in the legislation that cause it to meet the criteria in paragraph 1 cover a time period that ends before December 31, 2011, subject to the maximum adjustment provided for under paragraph 2, the amount of each current policy adjustment made pursuant to this section shall be limited to the difference between a. Total revenues projected to be collected under Title 26, as scheduled on December 31, 2009 to be in effect for the period of time covered by the relevant provisions of the eligible legislation, and b. what those revenues would have been if the estate and gift tax law rates, nominal exemption amounts, and related parameters in effect for 2009, with nominal exemption amounts indexed for inflation after 2009 consistent with subsection g, had been in effect for the same period of time covered by the relevant provisions of the eligible legislation as under subparagraph a. 4. Duration of policy adjustment adjustments made pursuant to this subsection are available for policies affecting the estate and gift tax through only December 31, 2011. Any adjustments shall include budgetary effects in all years from these policy changes. E. AMT Relief 1. Criteria legislation that includes provisions extending AMT Relief shall trigger the current policy adjustment required by this chapter. 2. Adjustment The amount of the maximum current policy adjustment shall be the difference between a. Total revenues projected to be collected under Title 26, as scheduled on December 31, 2009, 
to be in effect, and b what those revenue collections would have been if, on the date of enactment of legislation meeting the criteria in paragraph 1, AMT law had instead been amended by making commensurate adjustments in the exemption amounts for joint and single filers in such a manner that the number of taxpayers with AMT liability or lost credits that occur as a result of the AMT would not be estimated to exceed the number of taxpayers affected by the AMT in tax year 2008 in any year for which relief is provided through December 31, 2011. 3. Limitation if the provisions in the legislation that cause it to meet the criteria in paragraph 1 cover a time period that ends before December 31, 2011, subject to the maximum adjustment provided for under paragraph 2, the amount of each current policy adjustment made pursuant to this section shall be limited to the difference between a. Total revenues projected to be collected under Title 26 as scheduled on December 31, 2009 to be in effect for the period of time covered by the relevant provisions of the eligible legislation, and b. what those revenues would have been if, on the date of enactment of legislation meeting the criteria in paragraph 1, AMT law had instead been amended by making commensurate adjustments in the exemption amounts for joint and single filers in such a manner that the number of taxpayers with AMT liability or lost credits that occur as a result of the AMT would not be estimated to exceed the number of AMT taxpayers in tax year 2008 for the same period of time covered by the relevant provisions of the eligible legislation as under sub -paragraph. Paragraph A. 4. Duration of policy adjustment adjustments made pursuant to this subsection are available for policies affecting the AMT through only December 31, 2011. Any adjustments shall include budgetary effects in all years from these policy changes. F. Permanent extension of middle class tax cuts. 1. Criteria legislation that includes provisions extending middle class tax cuts shall trigger the current policy adjustment required by this chapter if those provisions extend one or more of the following provisions. A. The 10% bracket as in effect for tax year 2010, as provided for under Section 101A of EGTRRA and any later amendments through December 31st. 2009. B. The child tax credit as in effect for tax year 2010, as provided for under Section 201 of EGTRRA and any later amendments through December 31, 2009. C. Tax benefits for married couples as in effect for tax year 2010, as provided for under Title 3 of EGTRRA and any later amendments through December 31, 2009. D. The adoption credit as in effect in tax year 2010, as provided for under Section 202 of EGTRRA and any later amendments through December 31, 2009. E. The dependent care credit as in effect in tax year 2010, as provided for under Section 204 of EGTRRA and any later amendments through December 31, 2009. F. The employer provided child care credit as in effect in tax year 2010, as provided for under Section 205 of EGTRRA and any later amendments through December 31, 2009. G. The education tax benefits as in effect in tax year 2010, as provided for under Title IV of EGTRRA and any later amendments through December 31, 2009. H. The 25 and 28 percent brackets as in effect for tax year 2010, as provided for under Section 101A of EGTRRA and any later amendments through December 31st, 2009. I, the 33% bracket as in effect for tax year 2010, as provided for under Section 101A of EGTRRA and any later amendment through December 31st, 2009, affecting taxpayers with adjusted gross income of $200,000 or less for single filers and $250,000 or less for joint filers in tax year 2010, with these income levels indexed for inflation in each subsequent year consistent with subsection G. J, the rates on income derived from capital gains and qualified dividends as in effect for tax year 2000. 2010, as provided for under Sections 301 and 302 of JGTRRA and any later amendment through December 31, 2009, affecting taxpayers with adjusted gross income of $200,000 or less for single filers and $250,000 for joint filers with these income levels indexed for inflation in each subsequent year consistent with subsection G. K. The phase-out of personal exemptions and the overall limitation on itemized deductions as in effect for tax year 2010, as provided for under Sections 102 and 103 of EGTRRA. R A of 2001, respectively, and any later amendment through December 31, 2009, affecting taxpayer 1 with adjusted gross income of $200,000 or less for single filers and $250,000 for joint filers, with these income levels indexed for inflation in each subsequent year consistent with subsection G. L. The increase in the limitations on expense and depreciable business assets for small businesses under Section 179B of Title 26 as in effect in tax year 2010, as provided under Section 202 of JGTRRA and any later amendment through December 31, 2009. 2. Adjustment The amount of the maximum current policy adjustment shall be the difference between a. Total revenues projected to be collected and outlays to be paid under Title 26 as scheduled on December 31, 2009. 
to be in effect, and b what those revenue collections and outlay payments would have been if, on the date of enactment of legislation meeting the criteria in paragraph 1, the provisions identified in paragraph 1 were made permanent. 3. Limitation if the provisions in the legislation that cause it to meet the criteria in paragraph 1 are not permanent, subject to the maximum adjustment provided for under paragraph 2, the amount of each current policy adjustment made pursuant to this section shall be limited to the difference between a. Total revenues projected to be collected and outlays to be paid under Title 26, as scheduled on December 31, 2009 to be in effect for the period of time covered by the relevant provisions of the eligible legislation, and b. what those revenue collections and outlay payments would have been if, on the date of enactment of legislation meeting the criteria in paragraph 1, the provisions identified in paragraph 1 had been in effect, without change, for the same period of time covered by the relevant provisions of the eligible legislation as under subparagraph a. g. Indexing for inflation index amounts are assumed to increase in each year by an amount equal to the cost of living adjustment determined under Section 1F3 of Title 26 for the calendar year in which the taxable year begins, determined by substituting calendar year 2008 for calendar year 1992 in subparagraph b of such section. H. Guidance on estimates and current policy adjustments. 1. Middle class tax cuts for purposes of estimates made pursuant to subsection F. A. Each of the income tax provisions shall be estimated as though the AMT had remained at current law as scheduled on December 31st, 2009 to be in effect. And B. If more than one of the income tax provisions is two, included in a single piece of legislation, those provisions shall be estimated in the order in which they appear. 2. AMT for purposes of estimates made pursuant to subsection E. Changes to the AMT shall be estimated as if, on the date of enactment of legislation meeting the criteria in subsection E1, all of the income tax provisions identified in subsection F1 were made permanent. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 937, Application of BBEDCA For purposes of this chapter, 1. Notwithstanding Section 275 of BBEDCA, the provisions of Sections 905, 906, 907, and 922 of this title, as amended by this title, 1. Shall apply to the provisions of this chapter, 2. References in Sections 905, 906, 907, and 922 of this title to this subchapter or this title 1 shall be interpreted as applying to this chapter, 3. References in Sections 905, 906, 907, and 922 of this title to Section 904 of this title shall be interpreted as referencing Section 934 of this title, 4. The reference in Section 906B of this title to Section 902 or 903 of this title shall be interpreted as referencing Section 934 of this title, 5. The reference in Section 9061 of this title to Section 902 or 903 of this title shall be interpreted as referencing Section 935 of this title, 6. The reference in Section 9064 of this title to Section 902 or 900 103 of this title shall be interpreted as referencing section 934 of this title. 7. Section 906K of this title shall apply to a sequestration, if any, under this chapter. And 8. References to in section 907E of this title to section 901, 902, or 903 of this title shall be interpreted as referencing section 933 of this title. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 938 Determinations and Points of Order in this chapter shall be construed as limiting the authority of the Chairman of the Committees on the Budget of the House and Senate under Section 643 of this title. CBO may consult with the Chairman of the House and Senate Budget Committees to resolve any ambiguities in this chapter. 2 U.S. Code Paragraph 939, Limitation on Changes to the Social Security Act. A. Limitation on changes to the Social Security Act notwithstanding any other provision of law, it shall not be in order in the Senate or the House of Representatives to consider any bill or resolution pursuant to any expedited procedure to consider the recommendations of a task force for responsible fiscal action or other commission that contains recommendations with respect to the old age, survivors, and disability insurance program established under Title II of the Social Security Act, 42 U.S.C. 401 at SEC or the taxes received under Subchapter A of Chapter 9, the taxes imposed by Subchapter E of Chapter 1, and the taxes collected under Section 86 of Part 2 of Subchapter B of Chapter 1 of the Internal Revenue Code. B. Waiver This section may be waived or suspended in the Senate only by the affirmative vote of three-fifths of the members, duly chosen and sworn. C. Appeals and affirmative vote of three-fifths of the members of the Senate, duly chosen and sworn, shall be required in the Senate to sustain an appeal of the ruling of the Chair on a point of order raised under this section.